Ooh, it's a gloomy day. Hello, everyone. You may wonder what today's episode's going to be, and I've decided to take you on a little hike. You may not have noticed this, but I'm overweight. There are a handful of people online who have taken it upon themselves to remind me of that, generally in two ways. The first is the fat shamer. This person will just flat out call you fat or describe things like you waddling, whatever they think will hurt your feelings. The problem with this person is that they're insecure themselves and never learned a positive way to lift themselves up. They learned somehow, likely due to bad parenting, that if you make someone else feel bad, you can feel better by comparison. This is only a quick fix because they aren't actually solving their insecurity issues and will soon be right back to hating themselves. Then they have to find someone else to put down again and the cycle continues. These people are slaves to their own self-loathing opinions and will likely live their entire lives as sad, self-conscious people. The second type of people are fitness coaches. Not literal fitness coaches, that's just what I like to call them. These people might actually have good intentions and think they can train you and help you lose weight. They'll get online and offer to work out with you and help you lose weight. I believe some of them are really just fat shamers who are using this as an excuse to insult you, but not all of them. The problem with both of these people is that most of them don't know anything about you, especially in my situation where it comes from strangers online. They don't know anything about me, my medical history, my mental health history, my family history. They're going off of absolutely no information. Now, the fat shamer doesn't care and frankly should just be ignored. They just want that little boost of satisfaction to stave off their self-loathing for another day. But the fitness coach is making huge assumptions based solely on your appearance. They get online and go, I'll work out with you and you can lose weight, as if the person they're talking to has never worked out. They also say it like there's no other reasons why a person might be overweight. Like mental health doesn't play any part in the equation. Fat must be equal to you being lazy and never working out. Again, I know some of these people might have good intentions, but actually it's really insulting. The other thing these people don't take into account is that you might already be working out and losing weight. I currently am losing weight and am down from my heaviest weight, and though my weight loss hasn't been without any weight gain, I've never gotten back up to my max weight. There's so much more that goes into a person's weight than just looking at them and thinking, you're fat. I'm 46 years old, so there's 46 years of history that needs to be taken into account for my weight. I was a chubby kid growing up, and some of that might come from something my mother once told me. She said that when we were little, if we would start whining or crying, she would give us a cookie or something to get us to be quiet. How often did that happen? I have no idea, but it might be where I first learned to comfort myself with food. The summer between 8th and 9th grade, I had a growth spurt and got super skinny. I was like that until my early 20s, which was a period in my life where I really didn't care about myself at all. I didn't take care of my health, I drank and I ate junk food, and I started gaining weight. It also wasn't that I just ate junk food, I found comfort in junk food. I was abused growing up and food became my security blanket. So when I stopped drinking, I replaced that vice with another equally as addictive one. Sugar. I consumed sugar like it was oxygen. By the time I got married, I would eat a sharing-sized bag of Skittles and drink a liter of Mountain Dew and then go to bed. Or I would eat two bowls of Cinnamon Toast Crunch before bed. Just the worst possible shit at the worst possible time of day. So a few years back, it was no surprise when my doctor told me I was pre-diabetic. I was probably about 240 pounds, and I told the doctor, no problem, I'll work on it. Then I was 250, and that was my limit. As I hit 240, I told myself, if I ever hit 250 pounds, I'm going to get serious about losing weight. Then I hit 250, and 255, and 260. Then my doctor told me I was diabetic, and I said, no problem, I'll work on it. Then I was 265 pounds on a dozen different medications, and I would have little periods where I would cut out sugar and get more exercise. But never for long. Oh, and over the years, I went from being a carpenter, to a site supervisor, to a project manager, to completely leaving construction and working on a computer all day. That didn't help. Then I hit 270, and it finally hit me. I was 270 pounds and going to die if I didn't do something. I finally got serious, and the next time I weighed myself, I had actually hit 272 pounds. That was my max. 
I tried to cut out all sugar at once, but my body literally couldn't function. Sugar is like a drug. Your body grows to need it or else you get headaches, drowsiness, and dizziness. I changed strategies and started cutting out sugar gradually. I cut out soda. I obviously cut out candy. Then I started swapping out little things. I switched to a cereal with less than half of the sugar as the cereal I normally ate. Then I started reducing the amount of times I ate cereal for breakfast. I incorporated more stone ground oatmeal and eggs. For lunches, I swapped out breads for vegetables, and I completely stopped eating after 6 p.m. I drank a ton more water, and I tried to get myself moving more often. I got my wife a MetaQuest 2 for Christmas because she liked to play Beat Saber on the PlayStation VR that we already had. She didn't really like the way the headset felt on her face, so I ended up picking it up and one day I started playing Beat Saber and I had a blast. I had played the PlayStation VR with the kids occasionally, but I had never played Beat Saber before. Soon I was increasing the difficulty and breaking a sweat. Then I got an app called FitXR that has a bunch of guided workout routines and I've been doing that ever since. I had gotten myself down to 245, but then we took a vacation to Hawaii and it was a bit of a free-for-all with the treats, so I did gain some weight back. Since then though, I've gotten myself back down to 245, which is where I'm at now. Now that it's spring, I'm adding some hikes to my weekly routine and hope to get down another 20 pounds before we move to the Netherlands. Of course, there, bicycling is huge, and so that will be added to my weekly routine at that point. So far, taking it slow has really worked best for me. We're humans, and just cutting yourself off from treats completely is the best way for me to fail. So yes, I have a candy or a soda from time to time, but moderation is really the key. And as long as I keep my activity level up, it's not making me gain a bunch of weight back. The most important thing you can remember is that you have the ability to better yourself. Other people might come to you with their negativity and try to tear you down, but they have no control over your situation. You are the only one who controls you and can make your life better, even if it's just a short walk. Start with a walk around the block each day, and then after a week, add another block. Then add another after a week. Take small steps, but you can do it. I had a friend who literally just started doing as many push-ups as he could each day, and after a few months, he was already improving. After a year, he was noticeably in better shape. Do what you can and don't let anyone else cut you down. The sad person online calling you fat can't even act like an adult. Why should you pay attention to anything they say? They're irrelevant. The hike I went on today was in the foothills east of Los Angeles. This specific spot turned out to be not great. The trail was a little too steep in some areas and it was fairly overgrown. It got to the point where I could tell that the trail was continuing, but it was too overgrown for my liking, so I turned around. I'll be trying out different areas for the rest of the time we live here, and I'm going to take you guys along at least once a month. We'll see. Thanks so much for watching my channel. If you liked it, hit subscribe, and you can continue on this journey with me. If you like true crime, you can check out my other channels, This Is Monsters and Somewhere Sinister, right here on YouTube. Thanks so much, and be safe.